mature subject matter, viewer discretion is advised. We're going to ask you, we're going to tell you, then we're going to make you. Hands on the wall. Put it in a praying position. That's not a praying position. You know how to pray. And some inmates just can't handle the pressure. I just can't take it, though. I'd rather die than be here. Jail, Cleveland. This maximum security facility holds 2,100 dangerous inmates. Most of them charged with a felony, murder, robbery, kidnapping, drugs. It's always tense a county, but now it's the week before Christmas. And it's harder than ever to be in here, especially for Antoine Prim. <laughs> After five days in jail, he's just tried to kill himself. Mr. Goodman, he's trying to jump off the top tier. Taking the sight. I got a criminal. I got five years old. And they slip my baby sleep with me every night. I would have died of bed. He's an unemployed handyman, busted for possession of illegal drugs. I'm not no criminal. I'm 38 years old. I've never been in felony. It's the first time he's ever been charged with a crime. Inmate Prim, cell 22, was uh, kind of losing it. Decided he didn't want to be here anymore. Was going to jump over the top rail. One of the other inmates grabbed him, told him, hold on, watch what you're doing. I've never been over here. I can't okay. take it. I think it's his first time on a major charge. This is what he kept saying. He's just kind of panicking. They want to be here. It's the holidays. It always happens around the holidays. Everybody doesn't want to be here around Christmas. So I assume it just played on his mind. He figured that was the best thing he could do was just jump over there and end it all. Have a seat. Mr. Prim, I'm Jennifer. The staff knows that suicides and suicide attempts spike during the holiday season. Today, okay? You want to tell us about what happened prior to you coming over here? I got four babies. My babies sleep in my arm every night and I'm in here. And I can't go home to them. Okay, okay. Mr. Prim, but you, did you jump off of a... No, I didn't jump. You did? I would rather be dead than be in here. You'd rather be dead than be in here. I would rather be dead than be in here. You know what? You kill yourself right now, that's forever. They don't have a dad forever. Unless staff can calm Prim down, this father of four may not make it out of county alive. Staff says Cuyahoga County is a highly unpredictable mix, including the angry, the violent, and the out of control. More than 2,000 inmates spread over 12 floors in this sprawling high-rise facility. Many are young offenders, between 18 and 25. The prisoners who are most likely to cause trouble. The jail keeps most of them in separate pods to maintain control. 10 a.m., seventh floor. This pod full of young offenders may be about to explode. The jail security unit has just been tipped off that a brazen new gang may be planning an attack on the other inmates. Their name? The Heartless Felons. Well, we're a little behind the eight ball in our gang unit. Well, we're trying to play catch up here because this is about the first couple years that we've had an actual gang problem. In nine years on the jail special response team, Officer Thevenin has only seen sporadic gang activity. Until lately. We do have a little problem with our gangs. We got a little heartless felon group running around here now. Our juvenile offenders, they're graduating to big boy jail now. And when they get here, they click up. Thevenin is keeping a close eye on 21-year-old Martino Harris, who may be one of the ringleaders. He's on trial for murder, accused of killing one man and shooting two others at a local bar. Sent uh, kill somebody, shot two other people while in the uh, process of killing somebody. But it ain't happen how they say it happened. You know what I'm saying? They say I did something, I said I didn't do it. They say somebody said they seen me do it. I said they lying. You know what I'm saying? The story goes on and on. An informant has identified Harris as the general of the heartless felons, responsible for keeping the gang's foot soldiers in line. But Harris claims to know little about the gang. 
This gang supposedly started on juvenile facilities. From what I know, from what I see, it's all violence from what I understand. Nothing else I can tell you about it from, I don't can tell you what I see, you know what I'm saying, violence. That's it. From what I know, it's a variety of everybody. Young guys, older guys, COs. Yeah, some of all that. Harris is careful not to reveal any incriminating information. Being identified by the SRT as a gang member could mean even more prison time. The SRT is also watching 21-year-old Mario Minor. Previously convicted for trafficking drugs, Minor now faces aggravated murder charges. Minor denies any ties to the heartless felons, but says he respects their power. It's a powerful movement. Everybody want to eat at the same table. Everybody want to be a heartless felon because of the reputation they hold. Heartless felons hold them. Hell of a rep. Hell of a rep. Stopping the heartless felons is just one of the challenges facing Officer Thevenin and the SRT. They handle security and safety for the entire jail. Everything from disturbed prisoners to inmate on inmate assaults to officers in distress. We're here to maintain control and security in this facility. My job is to respond to any and all emergencies in this jail, whether they're medical, fights, riots, and uh, any other emergencies that might arise in this facility. The inmates know them as the men in black for their distinctive uniforms. They even got a song when the, when the SRTs come, the people that wear all black, we got a song, you know what I'm saying, when they come, they call it, here come the men in black. We wear the black uniforms for a reason. You know, they stand out. So these, these inmates know who we are when we come into a situation. So they know when they see the men in black or the SRT team coming, that fun time's over. Whatever they're doing, they better stop because we're there to take control of that situation. Today, one of the most notorious murderers in Cleveland history is arriving at County. While he's here, he'll need special attention from the SRT. They'll keep him in segregation and escort him everywhere, as they do with all high-profile inmates. All right, Morales, we're going to go all the way down to the end. When he was 22 years old, Alfred Morales kidnapped and beat to death his best friend's 12-year-old brother. It was an act of revenge, since his friend refused to give him an alibi for a car theft. Morales denies that he set out to murder the boy. My intentions was just to go to the movies that night with a friend, that was it. Uh, somewhere during that time, I smoked some reefer, drank some uh, beer, popped a couple of uh, uh, hits of acid. Uh, I always say that, that I'm pretty sure that whatever I smoked probably had been laced with something because uh, I blacked out. Sentenced to death, Morales has spent nearly a quarter of a century waiting to be executed. Until now. I've been on death row for uh, 24 years. Uh, right now, I'm back here at the county for a uh, resentence, so I got my death penalty overturned. Now, he's waiting for a new sentence. Morales says he feels remorse for murdering the boy. It hasn't been a day gone by that I ain't thought about the crime uh, because of the fact that I, I was uh, close, close to the victim's family. And, and so that, that's always on my mind every day. Otherwise, Morales passes his days trying to think about his life as little as possible. I don't let my mind wander off. I always find it better to keep sane, not, not drifting off, thinking about this, or thinking about that, because to me, it's just irrelevant to do all that. In a few days, Morales will face a judge to find out if he'll spend the rest of his life behind bars. Most inmates in Cuyahoga County Jail protest their innocence. Is this him? Smiley. And none more strongly than 25-year-old Leland Smiley. Down in intake, Smiley is getting booked for aggravated robbery and kidnapping. Higher body to the left, sir. Before being taken to a pod by an officer from the SRT. Smiley's already been in the pen three times. He was released three months ago after a one-year stretch on drug charges. You got me in jail for nothing, man. Smiley's been here before, but this time he claims he's been falsely accused. He maintains he was in prison when the crime was committed. I cannot make a, commit a crime while I'm already in jail. 
It appears he was ID'd only on the basis of a photograph, and he insists the system should be able to verify his story. They say it was two robberies, two kidnappings, two gun cases, and, and a whole bunch of other crazy stuff that posed that happened. I was incarcerated the whole time, and it should have been in the computer, and they should have knew that I was incarcerated. Wristband comes up. Five days in a whole ten dollar charge, Joe. Smiley has to wait for the court to figure out if his alibi holds water, and that could take time. Pardon me, sir. Yeah, I'm grown. You're grown, but I need you to close your mouth right now. All right. All right what up? Slide all the way down. Put your backs on the wall. Time inside Cuyahoga can make a man angry. I just go punch somebody because I'll be feeling, I'll be feeling all. Like some days when you wake up in here, man, it's just you, you just feel like lost. And Mr. Smiley, too tough. He'll be housed temporarily in one of the jail's intake dorms. But Smiley is already arguing with his jailers. Man, I ain't getting in no shower. Are you going to take no shower? No, I'm taking no shower. Man, we got a special place for I you. The whole love me. Right. Man. You want to go already? If he continues to make trouble, he could end up in administrative segregation, isolated from other prisoners in a tiny cell. Everybody takes showers and all that to get off the bunks now. That's his rule, man. So how you gonna make up a new rule for some that ain't even mandatory? That ain't mandatory, man. That ain't even in the rule book. 7 a.m. The SRT responds to an emergency call of an inmate fighting with an officer. It's their job to take control of the unruly inmate. Right. Inmate Clint Boyd is in jail on charges of stalking and harassment. The officers used pepper foam to subdue him. It makes your face feel like it's on fire. For their safety, the SRT officers also put Boyd in a spit mask. They're going to wash the pepper out, but that can make the burning flare up. Make your eyes. Make your eyes. Hold on. You got to blink them while the water's on it. Open and close. All right, that's good. That's good. That's good. Can we wipe that? You can't wipe that's what. That's what's going to make it work. You just got to keep blinking your eyes. Check this out. Are you ready to talk to the nurse? Hey, that water's hurting my eyes worse. Come on. Come on. Hey, they're hurting worse. Blink them. Ah! Blink them. I can't. Sergeant Kelly, a member of the jail's SRT, calms the inmate down while they wait for a staff psychiatrist to evaluate him. Boyd says the fight was over food. Not a dog, man. I ain't out here trying to call no conflicts, confrontations, which all are not. I just wanted some food, man, this morning. I wanted some food. I'm lactose intolerant. I can't eat. I haven't eaten in three days because they give me milk, milk and cheese products, and I can't eat it. I'm lactose intolerant, man. I, I just can't do it. And they, and they refuse. I haven't eaten in three days. And, they, and now this morning when I woke up, I just was so hungry. It's like, come on, man. I'm, you, this is... It's now up to staff psychiatrist Dr. West to determine if Boyd is rational or he needs to be moved to mental health to protect him and the officers. Sufficiently calm now? Now I am. Because just laying in here, just laying in here like that, it's got my mind dwelling on I, I need to keep my mind occupied off other stuff, even if it's a book or whatever. Okay. If you feel like you can control your behavior and you're not having any thoughts of hurting yourself no. or other people? No. All right, then I'm fine sending you off the site for you. You don't need to be up here. 
Got I, don't want, I don't want no problems with nobody. I didn't even want no problems with that man. Okay. I don't want no problems with nobody. I want to get well, the shit wrapped up all over what you do before. I, Remember, you're in jail, and the first issue here is security. Okay? All I right, very that. good. You made Boyd to be placed in 10 Alpha Cell 7 SX day. Boyd doesn't need to go to mental health, and he'll change his diet. But he'll spend at least a few days in administrative segregation on the 10th floor for fighting with an officer. Seventh floor. Sergeant Kelly's just gotten a disturbing break in his investigation of the heartless felons. He's received an anonymous kite, prison slang for a written message that claims the gang plans to attack an uncooperative inmate. It's called a kite. It's an inmate request form that was left on the officer's desk when he was doing a round. On two of the sides, it says, uh, look, read, soon as possible, big trouble. And again, read, soon as possible, big trouble. You open it up where it says inmate's name should be. It says, big fight, help soon as possible. It says then, there is some heartless felons about to start a big fight. There is a lot of us that is scared and don't want to get hurt by them. So help us as soon as possible, please. Here are some of their cells and names. And then they name four individuals and one of the four they're naming as the ringleader. Among the names, Martino Harris and Mario Minor. Kelly and his team race to the seventh floor pod. They need to act fast. The kite also claims the gang's armed. Thursday afternoon, Cuyahoga County Jail. Over a dozen members of the jail special response team and other officers storm the pod that houses the suspected heartless felons. Speed is critical. They've been tipped off that the gang has a homemade weapon, or shank. They need to find it fast before it's used against another inmate or an officer. They lock down the unit and go after the four alleged ringleaders. Gentlemen, fully stretched. The doors pop. Come on, your hands on your heads. Come to the We want to try to show force. You want to remove them from the area so it doesn't snowball into something bigger. One of their targets is inmate Tino Harris, reputed to be the general of the heartless felons. An informant says Harris and three other gang members are planning to attack uncooperative inmates. If the SRT can gather evidence against any of them, they could face longer sentences. Five clear, sir. The inmates are moved into different rooms for questioning. It's gonna be investigated. But, sir, I ain't know nothing, man. I don't know nothing about nothing. Okay. Man, please believe me, sir. I don't know nothing about nothing, man. Well, there's weapons in that pod. Somebody knows something. Well, no, All right, you've nothing. been implicated. We're going to investigate it. So I got to go to the whole Yeah, system. absolutely. Like absolutely. I promise to God, man, my little sister's soul and Jesus Christ. She has nothing to do with it. Nothing to do with it. I'll tell you who. Hey, go, sir. The rest of the inmates are moved out of the pod and into the wreck area. Have a seat forever. Sergeant Kelly needs to have every one of the inmates in the pod searched, just in case he has the weapon on him. Normally, if you find weapons, sometimes you'll find more than one. On this search, we haven't found any weapons. Sergeant Kelly and the other officers carefully search the cells for the weapon. Inmates are masters at hiding things. In toilets, in sinks, beneath beds, behind wall sockets. Officers uncover the shank. It was hidden under the plastic liner in a garbage can. A shank that could be used to stab anyone who gets out of line. They have a shank hidden in the garbage can. So if you're immediately with the garbage can out of the garbage bag out of the can and find this. It's a rigid piece of metal with a makeshift handle. Officers also discover where the wire for the shank came from. I don't know, but that's the only one missing. That's just a functional one. The cleaning uh, solution jug, the spring that would actually control the pump, is what they actually removed to make the weapon. And it was probably about a five, six inch rigid piece of wire to stick someone with. They were showing different inmates in the housing unit 
uh, the weapon and that in the sense that they didn't comply or do what they wanted them to do, that, you know, they were going to assault you on the housing unit. So it was their way of trying to intimidate. They also said that uh, possibly there would be a big fight jumping off in the area. Kelly has found the weapon. Now he wants to find out exactly who's responsible. Well, we handcuff them up, take them out, and try to sift through all the evidence. When you find a weapon, you definitely want to take it seriously. But getting the alleged gang members to talk may be impossible. When inmates break the rules, the jail puts them in segregation. Like 25-year-old Leland Smiley, the inmate accused of aggravated robbery and kidnapping. He still maintains he was in prison when the crime was committed. It's making him tough to handle. I'm in sick in the hole. I can't get on the phone. I can't have no commissary. All I got is all I can do is take a shower and lay down. No privileges, no mail, no nothing. He says he wound up in SEG just for talking, nothing worse. I was talking in the hallway. I wasn't following a direct order, so I guess in the hallway you can't talk. I guess it ain't a freedom of speech no more. I was a troublemaker in the past, but I'm saying that was the past, and I didn't been here times, and I ain't come to the hall. I'm knowing less and less about my case. I mean, with this case that they trying to say was me, but evidently it wasn't me because I was incarcerated. So I'm confused, man, and it's bringing me down more and more each day I think about it. Man. Being in solitary means he can't communicate with his family. And with Christmas just around the corner, Smiley is losing control. I got my son's birthday on the December 21st. I got Christmas. I'm about to miss all of this. They don't see what I see. They don't feel how I feel because they not me and they not going through it. They don't care if I ever see my son again. They don't care if I ever see a Christmas again. How I know because I'm seeing it now. It's in the computer. I was incarcerated. I'm bubbling inside, man. It's like a rage there, but I know not to go too far. If Smiley can't keep his anger under control, somebody might get hurt. Downstairs in the mental health unit, Inmate Antoine Prim has been put on suicide watch. He tried to kill himself after being arrested on a minor drug possession charge. I climbed up on the tier. And I, I climbed up like, some bars. And I, I looked down and I, I didn't know what to think. Like, the people started running over there. And I was like, I climbed back down. And I, wanted, I went back again. I, I never jumped, though. I never. I haven't slept since I've been here. I haven't slept in a week. I'm terrified. I've never been in prison before, in felony prison, jail, or whatever I'm in. I've never been in anything like this before. Prim may face days behind bars before he sees a judge, but if he's found guilty, it could be months before he can return to his family. Make me want to kill myself. Make me not want to live. I can't deal with it. It's... Okay. <laughs> Walls are closing in on me. And I can't find no way out. And I keep looking for my babies and I can't find them. I can't see my babies. I thought about ramming my head at the window or at the door until I knocked myself completely out or maybe got lucky and killed myself or flushed my head in the toilet. If I wanted to, I could think of a million ways. And before any of the COs would have got here, I could have done it. I don't know. I'll do anything to get out of here. I'll do anything to get out of here. I'll die if I have to stay here all night. The SRT and staff must keep close watch. Otherwise, Prim might not make it through the night. Help me sleep. 11 a.m. Friday. The SRT is interrogating the suspected heartless felons in segregation, trying to dig out more information about the shank and who made it. We'll do a little bit further investigation, interview those inmates to see if they want to relay any more information to us so we can try to piece the whole the whole thing together. Right. We're going to try to identify who truly 
are the gang members, you know, to the best of our knowledge. Martino Harris has been described by an informant as the general of the gang. He denies any knowledge of the weapon. They didn't even tell me they found the weapon. You know what I'm saying? This is the first time I'm here and they found the weapon. You know what I'm saying? I ain't seen the weapon since I've been here. I, I ain't too much worried about it. You know what I'm saying? Ain't too much they can do to me. On trial for murder, Harris is not intimidated by the SRT. Oh, this is a whole bunch of the crazy They got their own gang, too. Men in black. Yeah. Man, basically, they tough as They tough. And they'll never see you one-on-one, man. They gonna, <laughs> it's gonna always turn off one-on-one. Then like five-on-one, six-on-one. They gonna always beat your ass. You can't win with them. You can't win. You might as well just go in and bile out gracefully. You can't win. You know what I'm saying? But Harris is willing to take them on anyway. At least you one of them up. You know what I'm saying? They gonna always know you. They gonna respect you after they beat your ass, though. Like, yeah, he such and such up. But we gonna catch him again. You know what I'm saying? Do you have anything on you, Smith Stick, being a Harmony? No, sir. Officers also carefully questioned suspected heartless felon, Mario Minor. The informant named Minor as a weapons maker. Well, I want to see it. I want to see what it looked like, because I, I don't know how to make one. It said I made it. I don't know how to make one. I want to see what it looked like. <laughs> Show me. Oh, uh, man. I want to know where they get the pieces from. What would, we, what would you get the pieces from, I mean? It's a lot of scary people on the pod. People scary. You can murder a person in jail just like you can murder a person in the streets. You can hustle in jail just like you can hustle on the streets. It's just a different way of getting money in jail than in the streets. You're getting green pieces of paper on the streets. In jail, you're getting commissary. Admitted gang members face longer sentences. And while Mario denies gang involvement, his ties to the heartless felons remain unclear. It's a real powerful movement now. I can't, I ain't gonna say it's a gang, it's a powerful movement. You know, everybody wanna be in the family now, you know. Nobody want to go against the fellas because they they everywhere now. Kelly needs to find out if there are more gang members or more weapons on the pod, and he needs to do it quick. Another inmate in SEG, Alfred Morales, convicted child murderer, just faced judgment. He'll never go back to death row, but the court has sentenced Morales to 55 to life spend at least the next 30 years behind bars. I wanted it over with, so, and I was satisfied with the outcome. I know what my life's going to be for the rest of my life now, and that's uh, better than I, than I had before, because uh, I, I, I was always on the statement of, of being, being, being put to death. Morales says he could have continued his legal fight, but chose not to. I made the deal for the family, for the victim's family. Uh, uh, it was my best friend's uh, little brother that I took out, so. Morales insists that time has also warped his memory of the brutal killing. It's all a blur to me. You know, I wish I could say that, you know, I, I, I did this because I had a motive to do something. And it's sad, but I didn't have no motive. I, I was out of my mind. That's not a reason, but I, I always say that I was responsible for it because I chose to do that. Morales now has three decades in state prison to continue thinking about his crime. I know that had I not been on the drugs, the alcohol, and enhance or whatnot, uh, it would have never happened. I was a good person before that. And I'm a good person now. And I'm always remain a good person. The SRT will move him out of county and back to Trumbull Correctional within the week. The day after attempting suicide, inmate Antoine Prim is getting to see a doctor. The whole reason was because I couldn't deal with being in a cell. Guess where I wound up? In a cell. So. <laughs> the prison psychiatrist must determine that Prim is no longer a danger to himself or others before he can go back to general population. I have to see a, a psych doctor. I, I, I did attempt to commit suicide, so... Now, this is information that I have here that you attempted to jump off the second uh, tier of the bunk. Uh, I don't want to live anymore. I'm with more to my family dead and very upset, very uncontrollable. Okay. Is that, that pretty accurate? Uh, what's that all about? Uh, basically, I can't deal with being locked up. I can't deal with it. And then 
being incarcerated in itself sent me through so many emotional feelings at once. As I'm terrified of my surroundings, I'm claustrophobic, I feel trapped. The doctor I, insists I Prim has the strength to survive inside. Are you suicidal now? But you were suicidal yesterday. I couldn't take the pressure of being in this, it, it, the com, confined space. It was driving me crazy. And uh, the, you been in jail before? For a couple days, but never like this. It was always a big pod. We could walk around. Okay. Well, you know, being upset by being in jail is, is difficult and stressful for everybody. But they never adjust to this. You can, you can, and you will. There's no such thing as, wait a minute, let me finish. There's no, oh, that's good, but there's no such thing as can't not adjust to okay. jail well, you or prison. No, I'm serious. Know there, anything about well, that you need just, to know that. You need to know that. No, there's no such I thing. I to be here ever again, I will not. I hope not. If it's well, anywhere with them. Say, well, I'm trying to say to you is that a lot of people say I can't deal with it. And everybody deals with it because they have to. And you know that holding drugs puts you at risk. Okay. You know that. I have to accept responsibility. That's right. And you're going to have to deal. And you have to deal with this. And you're going to have to go through whatever it is you have to go through. But you're not suicidal. I'm, I'm not going to keep you down here. I'm going to send you back to general population. Still got put everything in the bag, sir. It's just a few days before Christmas. Prim is hoping to get out in time to spend it with his family. Now, it's up to the judge. Like, can you tell me what's up? 344. So, may you want episode two. Sergeant Janky wants episode four. Saturday, 10 a.m. Okay, Sergeant Kelly's investigation of the Heartless Felons gang has just gotten more dangerous. One of the inmates is saying that there's seven other individuals that are really the Heartless Felons. Kelly needs to move in fast and find out the truth to protect the other inmates. We have reason to believe that there are a decent amount of heartless felons that are still left in Southern Bravo. The warden wants us to move up one of the inmates that have been identified as being the one that makes the weapons in 7B cell 1. 7B cell 5, he's what they call the enforcer or the terminator. With the original suspects still in segregation, the SRT goes back into the pod to pull out seven more alleged gang members. Talk. Your hands up against the wall. Put it in the praying position. Praying position. That's not a praying position. You know how to pray? Okay, check this out, guys. We have reason to believe that you guys are either affiliated with the Heartless Felons and or had some sort of knowledge uh, to the weapon that was uh, found in the housing unit. You guys are going to be locked up. You're going to be put up on a pot up on the 10th floor of Jail 1. Other than that, you need to have no talking. You need to cooperate. You need to cooperate. And like I said, you want to address whatever you want to address. But Man, I don't like man. Well, I'm from New York, man. Okay. I'm boogie with that. Okay. Shit. Bring that. Bring that to the jail investigator. Don't kick it up to the next level. Okay. Right now, you. Right now, you just have one rule violation. Right now. I'm just saying though, like, where this come from though? Who hey. says like this though? You know what? Check this out. There's no more talking. No more communication. You'll go up to the tenth floor. All right. Let's transport him up to ten. On ten. The inmates will be strip searched before being isolated in seg cells. It's standard procedure to make sure they don't have weapons or drugs. You're going to be taken into 10C pod. You're going to be instructed to go to the back of the cell, face the back wall at all times. You're going to be instructed to take one step back from the wall. You're going to take each item of clothing off one at a time. A strip search is going to be conducted to make sure you have no contraband on your person. One prisoner yeah, refuses to be strip searched. Hey, yo, hey, yo, hey, yo. Hey, man, y'all just did this for naked search the other day, man. Be quiet. This is what's going to happen. This is what's going to happen. Okay, you don't want to go, you don't want a strip search? No, I don't. Okay, you got the restraint chair? We'll put you in the restraint chair and you can sit in the restraint chair because I have reason to believe you have some sort of
contraband on your person. So until you decide to comply, you'll remain in the chair Gentlemen, until you decide to comply. Put your feet down. And if at the end of the, our tour of duty you still don't want to comply, then if we have to cut the clothing off you, we'll cut the clothing off you to make sure that you do not have any type of contraband on your person. Sergeant Kelly puts him in the restraint chair while they move the other inmates into cells. Spade, you're next. Put off first, hand it underneath your arm to my voice. Again, remain facing the back wall at all times. Go ahead, put your hands through your hair. All right, turn back around, face me. Open your mouth, tongue, back face the wall again. Put your hands on your head. Remain facing the wall until you hear the door close. Step to the back, all the way to the back. Kelly is hoping to get one of these inmates to reveal more about the gang. Right He's looking for enough up. evidence to charge the ringleaders. Right all the way to the bottom, cough three times. <laughs> Prisoners in solitary. Kelly heads back to talk to the unruly inmate. Now check this out. We're not. No one's trying to mess with you. No one's trying to f with you. You've been identified as someone that may have either knowledge or been involved with the weapon that was found the other night. Okay. If you have nothing to do with it, then roll with that. You'll explain your side of the story to the jail investigator on Monday. If you take this to another level, you give me no other reason but to write you up on other charges, which means. You're going to have your visits, your phone calls, all your privileges suspended for a lot longer than what you would have. So which is it? You're going to comply, we're going to roll with this, or are we going to have to take you down to medical and have them cut your clothing off? Okay. Hold on. I'm going to pull you out here in the hallway. They're going to take you out of the chair. They're going to put cuffs on you. So your hands are behind your back, and we're going to do it just like anyone else does when you get put in lock. Up. We're going to play some 10 Charlie, cell 11 for rule violation. Two. Kelly wants to send the heartless felons a clear message. The gang will never be allowed to get a real foothold in this jail. Juan Prim is about to go before the judge, and he's worried. He could get months behind bars on his drug possession charge. You can look at me and tell I'm not no drug user. I've never been in any felony trouble before. Only trouble I've ever really been in was traffic, misdemeanor court. There's a reason why I haven't never been to prison and all of my friends have. There's a reason why this is just now is as far as I've come. Prim just wants to be free. He's about to find out if he's going to get that chance. 9 a.m., Cuyahoga County Jail. After spending nearly a week in segregation, inmate Leland Smiley is going downhill fast. Smiley! Smiley! Hey, man. Ball right there. Man, they ain't got me for nothing, man. That's why they got these people on me. They got me with all these felony warrants, man, but they know I'm innocent because I was at bail. Mark. He still claims to be wrongly accused, but the jail has no choice but to hold him. And I'm at that stage, man, where anything can happen because I'm so frustrated, man, and you get miserable and all that. Then when you call and talk to your kids and they like, when you coming home or talk to your girl and she like, when you coming home and you got to tell them you don't know. Smiley is still waiting to go before a judge. I might not go to court for three months from now or something in here, man. I might keep getting rescheduled. It don't, it don't, it don't, it don't even add up to me right now. Because every time I be in this situation, I be in here six months, five months before I even see a, a lawyer or anybody. I just know I'm about to be in here for something that I ain't do. In his cell? Do you want him in his cell? If convicted, Smiley could be looking at hard time. I could be facing 30, 40 years if they wanted to. I'm, I'm lost right now. I'm, I'm lost, man. I'm about to miss Christmas, miss my son's birthday. I'm, I'm just here. I don't understand. 
He just has to tough it out until he gets his day in court. You know what I'm saying? You're innocent to proving guilty. Now I'm, I'm guilty, man, until I'm proving innocent because I'm here. It's, it's bad, man. It's all bad, man. And it hurt inside. It just, you just got to put up with it, man. One inmate has already received some good news. You there in order to walk on the right hand side of the hallway along that wall? Now I'm going home. I'm going to be with my family. I miss my babies desperately. When I walk out of here, I'm walking all the way home. <laughs> Probably the best walk of my life. I I'm hope if I ever see you again, it's at the corner store. That'll work. <laughs> Hold up right here, face that wall for me. Antoine Prim says he's lucky that the judge went easy on him. And I think she did, you know, realize that there was something something wrong and that I shouldn't have been there. So she really worked with me. Her giving me time served and straight release, I think, was a blessing. Prim is processed out by the SRT. We're dressing him over in his street clothes. Now, when he's done with that, we'll take him over to the release desk. They'll run his information, make sure there's not any wants, warrants anywhere. And then... We'll release him from there. Okay, along this wall, and we're going through that door on the right. Property. First thing I'm doing is uh, I'm walking out of these doors, and I'm headed west, straight from here till West 48th, to my uncle's house, and um, and I'm calling my wife. Prim says he's learned his lesson. I don't ever want to be in here. <laughs> I'll be dead first over my dead body. As long as I have control of myself, I'll never be here again. But if he ever crosses the line again, there will always be a cell waiting at the Cuyahoga County Jail. The SRT releases suspected heartless felon Mario Minor from segregation. The SRT can't prove that Minor made the shank or that he's a gang member. No, he's coming out of the Good luck, Mr. Minor. So honestly, this ain't gonna stop nothing, you know, even if we in the hole tonight, it's still not gonna stop what's going on. They're gonna do what they're gonna do regardless, you know what I'm saying? But they're keeping suspected gang leader Harris in SEG pending further investigation. He's released only to attend his murder trial. Harris taunts the SRT every chance he gets. They so tough, they always got something to prove. You know what I'm saying? They always trying to show off in front of whoever, whoever watches, you know, they always trying to put on the show for somebody. Show for somebody, you know how it be, man. They got something to prove, they men in black. But the SRT has stopped the gang this time, and they're going to continue to disrupt the heartless felons and make it impossible for them to operate. Well, they're not gonna be a problem for certain. Never. Because we're gonna deal with them. They will not, it will not be a problem for certain, period. indictments, man, for something the person ain't do, man. You know, they got me with two counts of everything, from kidnapping to...